Hi everyone, it's Red Hill Eagle, and welcome to episode two of Who Hired a Hitman? This is the TEW 2020 series. It's December 1997. Last week, the NWO announced they have just made a major new signing. They are due to reveal who that signing is in tonight's Nitro. And we kick off with a promo video for Goldberg. It's a menacing promo video. He's actually done a little bit better than uh, the Giant did with a rating of 64. And then the action kicks off with Ric Flair against Mortis. Had decent reaction from the crowd, but terrible wrestling. But Flair gets the win in five and a half minutes by submission. It's a rating of 41. And then post-match, Ric Flair issues a challenge for Starcade. And La Parker comes out. Obviously, last week, Ric Flair was talking about L.A. Parker and whether he had it in him to be a star. And uh, La Parker has now accepted the challenge from Ric Flair to face him at Starcade, a rating of 48. And then we have Lanny Poffo, our news anchor. Yes, I tend to do this with my saves now. I have like a news segment. And in this particular one, he is announcing that Faces of Fear will challenge the Steiner Brothers at Starcade for the Tag Team Championships. And he also announces that Diamond Dallas Page will take on Raven, also at Starcade. That's a rating of 47. In a terrible match, we have Alex Wright against Disco Inferno. And in 5 minutes 42 seconds, Inferno gets the win by pinfall with the last dance. That's a rating of 47. Maybe not quite as terrible as uh, I initially thought there, but yeah, still not great. The Steiner brothers are then with their manager, Ted DiBiossi, and they're just reacting to the news that they'll be uh, taking on the faces of fear at Starcade with their World Tag Team Championships on the line. So it's just a promo, really, from the Steiners just reacting to that match. And it's a rating of 60. The NWO then have an announcement that their new signing is Brett, the Hitman Hart. But when they introduce him, he's nowhere to be seen. He doesn't come out. Rating of 77. Gene Oakland then interviews Eddie Guerrero. And uh, I've spelt cruiserweights there wrong, but uh, oh well. Um, and Eddie Guerrero is just basically saying, look, the cruiserweight division needs to up their game. I've got no competition. There's no one around that can beat me. I might as well just hang up this belt at home. It's mine for good. There's just no competition. And I'm getting a bit fed up with it, to be honest. Rating of 52 overall. Faces of Fear then take on Devon, Storm and Chemo. I've just signed these two guys as uh, a couple of jobbers, really, just for a few months, just to kind of uh, bolster up that kind of undercard. And uh, we were kind of lacking in faces uh, for our jobber roles, so I've taken them on. Um, we're not going to get great matches out of them. This only got a 38, but Faces of Fear get the victory in nearly five minutes. Booker T and Stevie Ray then promote the future WTW live events. Just like we had from Roddy Piper last week, this is the Harlem Heat. Uh, just a voiceover, really, over a few you know graphics of uh, where the the next few uh, WCW live events are and uh, where you can buy your tickets. It's a rating of fifty eight. Conan then faces Lex Luger, and it's a rating of sixty three. And in eight and a half minutes, it's Lex Luger who gets the win with a flying forearm. Uh, but Buff Bagwell did come out and distract Luger during the match. We then have a promo music video for Diamond Dallas Page. It's just a, a little angle, really, just to get Page in the show and give us another angle. And it's a rating of 82. Chris Benoit then talks to Billy Graham. We've just signed Billy Graham as a on-screen personality. And it's wouldn't quite say it's an interview, but he's just caught up with him backstage. And uh, Benoit is issuing a challenge to Eddie Guerrero at Starcade. If he thinks he's the only one in that cruiserweight division, then he's got another thing coming. I want to take him on at Starcade. That's a rating of 35. Benoit then has a match with his tag team partner, Dean Malenko, and they take on Kidman and Sick Boy. 
and in nearly five minutes, it's Benoit and Malenko with the victory when Chris Benoit uh, pinned Sick Boy with a dragon suplex. It's a 41 rating. And then Sting cuts a promo. He's in the ring and he's basically just laughing at the NWO. You know, where was your big signing? You know, where, where was Brett? Where was he? Have you even signed anyone? Have you even signed this man? I mean, what's, what's going on, guys? You know, and he, he continues to say, like he did last week, that he's uh, he's trying to build his own team as well to uh, take on the NWO. They're getting too big. They're getting too arrogant. And they need to be taken down. And this is a rating of 79. In our main event, Randy Savage takes on Roddy Piper. Uh, had uh, great heat and decent wrestling. And it's Savage with a victory in uh, just over seven minutes by submission um, after uh, Kevin Nash distracted Roddy Piper and kind of just made him submit, really, just made him give in. Savage didn't see that, however. Now, it's a rating of 64, really disappointing. I, I, I tend to, this tends to happen to me every time I have a WCW save, especially in this era. It's a very difficult roster to work with, a lot of unhappy people. The backstage, rate, uh, backstage rating is really low. So a lot to do, a lot to figure out, get some younger guys over, and I'll get there. But at the moment, I'm going to have to suffer a few poor ratings. 64 here for our main event. But post-match, Randy Savage celebrates his win, but then he looks around and he sees Nash and Hall, and he's like, kind of, what, what are you guys doing at ringside? Why are you here? And, he, you know, he's asking them questions and pointing to Piper and... Nash and Hall are acting all innocent, you know. Oh, you know, it's fine, it's fine, Randy. Don't worry about it. You know, it's okay. And as uh, as they get out the ring and walk down the aisle, it all seems good. They're all friends again. Rating of ninety two for that angle, but I'm not expecting anything good for the overall rating. Seventy. Uh, I've got to be honest, it's probably a little bit more than I thought. But um, yeah, losing us popularity in eleven regions, and we only gained in twelve this time. So, yes, I. Need to pick up these storylines as well, actually. We don't have enough interesting ones going on. I think there's a lot more... They're more interesting in my head than they are in-game. So definitely need to do something about that. But uh, 70, it is what it is. Got a few more matches booked for Starcade. Two more Nitros before that. I hope you've enjoyed this one, everybody. Please like and subscribe if you have. And I'll see you all again soon for Episode 3 of Who Hired a Hitman?